Hello, this is Piotr Walczyszyn. Uh, so this is our last episode from the series where we learn how to build PhoneGap applications connected to uh, Force.com. Uh, so this time we'll see how you can actually package your application for multiple devices using a PhoneGap build service. Uh, so previously I showed you how you can create an Xcode project and uh, build from there your application. Uh, well, this is still valid and if you want to do an Android build you can use Eclipse in order to uh, create a, a PhoneGap project uh, and also to uh, to link it with your www folder but in this case if you want to target more than let's say one platform uh, and so it really makes sense to start using the PhoneGap build service which is a, a, an online in cloud uh, packaging uh, solution for for PhoneGap all right so um, to get you started quickly let's go back to our source code we have to prepare our app for this online build sort of solution uh, so first of all I prepared already some content, so let me copy it to my project and we'll go through it just in a second. Okay, now we got it. So let's start with a config XML. It's a, a descriptor of our application that is used uh, by uh, PhoneGap Build to, to package your app. First uh, important thing, you should specify an identifier of your application. Um, next, you can put like version code, version of your app, uh, then uh, and a name of your application that will be displayed uh, with the app on the, on the app uh, display or the phone or device display. A description of your app, who's the author, uh, what's the version of PhoneGap um, that you want to use. Uh, well, then you can specify some of those options here are like, um, these are optional, uh, but uh, I, like I want to use my device only or the application only in a portrait mode. So the orientation I specify to portrait. <clears throat> then I have uh, a target device I want to target only the handsets so uh, it uses the smaller form factor I don't want to use the uh, web view bounce uh, option that so I specified to false and it's in a setting from uh, for iOS so that app can actually bounce like it was a actually a web page but we don't want that next we can uh, we can put a paths to, uh, to icons that will uh, be used for different platforms. So you, as you know, different platforms have different resolutions and also the all, kind of different ways of, uh, of um, uh, designing your icons. So it's good to provide a different set for each one. So let's say for iOS, a standard set are those three icons. So an uh, icon for 57 pixels by 57 pixels, 721 and uh, double the 57, so 114 uh, for the retina displays. Um, next, Android icons, I specify for LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, XDPI, and all those are the paths to actually um, files or PNGs actually in my in my project. And then the same thing for splash screen. So I specify for iOS splash screens. Uh, well, for Android, unfortunately, mm, uh, well, I didn't uh, I didn't have a good uh, splash screen for Android yet with my app. So I just commented out, but this would work the same. You would specify uh, for each um, uh, resolution a different uh, different icon there or P splash and PNG next uh, you can put the, uh, all kinds of uh, permissions for your application this is required by Android and well I uh, hear my app in this case uses network only but if you want to like use contacts I don't know, geolocation, database, all that, you have to specify the permissions here. And if you go to PhoneGap build documentation, there is a whole list of all the permissions that are supported. And the uh, uh, last two things, uh, first is um, uh, a whitelisted uh, URL uh, that my application can access. And th in this case, my app will only use uh, salesforce.com services. So I put a URL to salesforce.com and I added this attribute subdomains, so it will uh, allow all also all the subdomains of a salesforce.com. And the last uh, last setting here is, um, is a, a configuration of a plugin. So my app will use a child browser plugin for the Force TK UI. So it, the user can enter the login name and password uh, with the OAuth form, uh, form with, uh, from uh, Salesforce. All right, so this was config XML. Uh, a couple of other things, of course, we have to remember to put those uh, all those uh, specified icons or splash screen 
screens under your uh, WW folder. So I have Splash, Android, iOS, whatever structure you want to have it, you, you can use. This is all dependent on, on your configuration here. Although it's uh, you should specify um, a default icon and default splash screen in, in case uh, uh, some of those things are not specified for certain platforms, this will fall back to, to these. Uh, and the last thing here that I added uh, that is an index HTML file uh, that will be used by the phone got built. It's it requires actually you to have that file and this is the starting point. So you don't have to then use a separate one per platform as we usually do when doing a, um, a build for or doing a build on a local machine, then in, if you're doing only PhoneGap build and packaging with PhoneGap build, then you just need this one because PhoneGap build during the packaging for different platforms will include uh, a PhoneGap or Cordova, or, uh, yeah, in this case for PhoneGap JS and, uh, and uh, appropriate plugins as well uh, per platform. So in this case, let's say I want to, I'll be using PhoneGap of course JS and Child Browser JS and as I said, no matter which, uh, which, oh well, I can actually remove that comment. Uh, so no matter which platform uh, I'm on, PhoneGap build will do it smartly and will apply the, the proper one here. Okay, so we're ready right now to uh, push that content into PhoneGap build. And there are a couple of ways to do that. And it will take uh, the easiest approach, which is actually you can zip your uh, www folder. So I compress. Now let's go into the, uh, to the service. So I should have here. And let's create a new app. So, so the PhoneGap build is under buildphonegap.com and you can log in with your Adobe ID into it. And there, are, there is a couple of options how you can uh, create the app, as I said. So let's create a new one. And the first and the easiest one is actually to upload that zip uh, content of my app. So let's open that and it's now uploading. The other option you had there is you can actually put, push your content or push your source code into GitHub and uh, PhoneGap build can clone it from GitHub and package that content there from there. And uh, the last option is that um, PhoneGap build also supports um, a full REST API. So if you want to, let's say, automate this process with your um, uh, with with your continuous integration server or as some other build services that you're using, then you can use the REST APIs and there you can either go with the GitHub approach or with the uh, a zip file approach. There is there is this option there. Now, as you can see, it uploaded the content. We can enable debugging if we want to use Winery that is hosted on the uh, PhoneGap build services. We can use also, we can enable the hydration. Hydration is a very interesting option where it can actually um, auto update your application without reinstalling it so it will the application will actually if it detects there is a new source code in the PhoneGap build service it will pull that source code into itself and restart it uh, content and well we don't need it right now but it's very useful uh, during debugging and and um, development so we're ready to build and let's start the build process and as you can see, it's building right now for the six platforms that PhoneGap Build supports. Uh, one thing important to mention here is like for iOS or any other platform that requires a platform uh, or the a, a certificate uh, uh, provided by the vendor of the platform, then you still have to upload it to PhoneGap Build. As you can see, I don't have a certificate for BlackBerry, so it gave me a notification here that it has failed. Uh, if I, I actually have for iOS, uh, so once this is over building for iOS, then we'll, uh, well, we already have the option. So it's already built. As, and as I said, I. I uploaded my uh, certificate and I configured it with, uh, with the PhoneGap build service. Now, there are a few options how to install. So first of all, I can click and it will pop up if I want to download it. No, I don't want to download it and I can download for each specific platform. Now, I'll follow a more cool uh, option. So I will use actually a QR code scanner to scan that uh, QR code here. And let me show you that. So let me turn on my AirPlay. Again, this, let's move it around like that. So you can see the two things. 
uh, aside. Okay, so now if I go back here, I point it to the QR code. There you go, it just detected the QR code. And now it should detect that there is an app underneath it. So underneath the link that it was pointing to, I press install. And now it's installing the app. So you can see the progress bar. And when it's, once it's installed, I can launch the application. All right, we got it. You can see nice splash screen. It will pop up me a child browser with the um, Salesforce authentication form. So let's put the password. Mm, let's log in. So if you're doing, if you're logging in for the first time, it may ask you actually for the to verify your code. In my case, I already logged in. Uh, so previously from that device with that IP address, so I don't have to put the verification code. There we go, we finished the login process and we got the list. Now we can tap on it and you can see it works as we designed it. So we have nice application running. All right, um, so as you could see, the packaging and the whole building process of phone app applications can really be fun. Uh, I encourage you to give it a try and well, Thank you very much and bye.